What we got here today is this small device. It is a satellite receiver of TAP Smart MX05L digital satellite receiver. Let me first wind this wire. This is the receiver case. We do have some interfaces in the back. This is the LNB in and LNB out. It's also the antenna control voltage. Two smart connectors for the TV and the VCR. One R RRS232 connector for programming and maybe for control of this receiver and then we do have several input and output change uh, connectors and last but not least the power on and off switch before we plug this uh, device in to the mains we will unscrew the top cover and see what's inside because I'm afraid it is damaged inside because it smells like it has burned something inside. Okay then let's do unscrew the top cover. This is my box for the screws, so everything uh, is complete after then. What I didn't show you so far is the front side of this receiver. This is just a dummy slider and behind this we have one USB connector we do not have the pay TV cards which uh, normal, normally we can put in this slot ok standby ok and menu and exit behind this glass I can see a display ok let's go on with the unscrewing job there are two screws on the sides and three another screws in the back. Seems to me this is an analog receiver, so someone threw this receiver out because the analog satellite uh, receiving is no longer possible. It has been switched off and replaced by digital reception. Okay, that's the top cover, and now we will have a look at the board inside we have the typical two board construction one power board this is a switch mode power supply
and one digital processing board this is this one it's not much uh, populated with ICs I just see one customized ASIC AC in this receiver and some surrounding components like the quartz resonator or oscillator a memory chip probably SD RAM here maybe a display driver and some voltage regulators we do have a description on this board which tells us what voltages this power supply generates in order to supply power to the main board I have to switch the sides so I can easily read what stands here we have 3.3 volts ground another 3.3 volts then 5 volts then ground another ground 7 volts 14 volts ground and 20 24 volts obviously when I smell on this board I do not smell what I was smelling for the first time so we will try just to power this thing up and see what happens if it's still okay or if it has some problems here we can see the high frequency tuner which is connected with the main board via special connector I'm just thinking uh, what to do with this thing I probably will save some parts when I need them for something else for some uh, equipment that I repair I can use maybe the whole power supply and on the main board it looks like it has another power regulators in this place here's another one then we have here some power regulator or power transistor here in the side on the side of this board and maybe we also can use the whole display which is mounted down there behind the front blend okay let's now power this thing up and see what happens okay I plug this thing in or oh, maybe I switch switch it on here and then plug this power connector in okay and it is full functioning it shows on on its display it just booted up of course it can't receive any stations I don't have a satellite dish to check this thing with a satellite signal however we can check the voltages let me find a ground here seems 
seems to be the right place to connect the ground and now let, let's check the voltages there is the 3.3 volts here's the second one now we should get 5 volts it's actually 5.5 volts then we go on with uh, two grounds okay then 7 volts 14 yes everything it's okay right now and the last voltage is 24 yes we came here over the we have to switch another mm, and we measure 25 volts so everything is okay here in this device so I can be sure when I need some parts from it it's all functioning a good idea would be to connect this actually via the serial port to a PC and just uh, run the terminal program and see what we can get from the receiver this way it would just be interesting okay I can switch it off there is the clock and I hear a noise so the power supply is not the best quality if it runs without load it starts to produce a sound which is normal in low quality power supplies well maybe not so normal but it happens to be and I don't want to keep it permanently on the in the on position if I would happen to use the Zipa for my for my personal reasons. Okay, now we can switch this off. And maybe speak a little bit about this device. This is a mass production device. Of course mass products product and optimize for cost savings some few specialized chips on the board and thinking of if it does make sense to remove all the boards and look at every one on them but there's not much interesting things on, on the boards I just plug this thing off again now it's unplugged let's find the power transistor in the switching power supply here we do see some filters some input filters for the high frequency harmonics it filters them out doesn't allow to them to flow back into the mains and I see we have one voltage connector on this side and here we have separated from the high voltage or mains parts the output the outputs 
I think that's uh, audio, audio and video outputs. It's quite quite unusual to mount this interfaces right on the power board. Usually you would place them far away from the power board to exclude the possibility that the voltage can cross the board and appear on these terminals. Well, it's probably well separated from the part, but it's quite unusual to see on one board the audio and video outputs and the mains. Okay, after filtering we have here the GRETS rectifier bridge. This is a common combination of rectifier diodes. Here is the filter capacitor and we have a small IC here it is and this IC controls the power supply I do not see the power transistor it can be at the back of this power supply or it is integrated into this IC but anyhow I miss the heatsink or is this or the heatsink is not needed in this case here we have the optocoupler which provides the control side with some feedback signals from the secondary side and this thing control itself about this feedback voltage to provide the right frequency which is needed to keep all the secondary voltages we have on this connector in their specifications. So on the, on the secondary side we have a couple of rectifier diodes which again rectify the 50, 60, maybe 100 kilohertz frequency again to DC current couple of filter capacitors some inductive filters also and that's it very simple very cheap to build I can see on the PCB a whole bunch of unpopulated parts so this should be a general power supply board which is then populated with the parts depending on in which device it comes in. We have here also a power connector which actually breaks the connection on the primary mains side so if the power connector is switched off this device actually becomes gets uh, no no power at all it's completely switched off that's a good idea to it helps to save much much money of the customers because if a device is permanently switched on standby and although it maybe takes only one watts per hour but switched on the whole year you can easily came to 10 or 50 dollars or euros you need would you pay for nothing just to have this thing connected when you, when you remain this thing connected to the mains Okay, we talked a little bit about the power supply. Then it's connected with the ribbon cable with the main board. 
we have two connectors as we saw this one is for the outputs here here the big chip on the main board is branded ALI ALI brand it's clocked with 27 megahertz from this quartz oscillator and this processes the whole signal it gets from the satellite dish from the low noise block this thing receives, receives uh, frequencies about uh, in a range about well not, not the range the main frequency it gets it's about 2.1 gigahertz what else do we have here on the main board some components around our main ASIC as we already saw and mentioned and that's it here we have some more passives and uh, passives and some ICs to properly generate the needed voltage voltage levels for the SCART connectors to the TV and to the VCR the serial connector is connected with its own cable this cable has one two three four leads so there are the TX the RX receive and send ground and another one I don't know what this one is if it plays a role when you connect it when we are connecting from the PC using a terminal to this receiver yeah okay I think that's it it was interesting hopefully also for you to have a look at the smart MX05L digital satellite receiver thank you for watching